We'll vote them out and replace them ourselves. Yes, I care about school as well. It's very, very important, but this, our lives are more important, quite frankly. Hello and welcome to Off Script. I'm Bruce Johnson. Thanks for joining us today. Thousands upon thousands of students from the DMV and across the country walked out of class, unexcused in some cases. It was a nationwide protest to demand laws to prevent gun violence. The protesters marked the one month anniversary of the day that 17 students and faculty were killed when a gunman opened fire at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Today's demonstrations grabbed the attention of the country and a lot of other nations as well. This evening, I'm joined by four students from schools in the Washington area, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Michael Toten, he goes to Lake Braddock Secondary School. Anna Goodman, she goes to Sandy Spring Friends School. And Danny Miller goes to Churchill High School. And Willa Hans goes to Capital City Public Charter School. Thank you all for joining us. Nobody's tired, right? You weren't out there that long. That's great. <laughs> uh, let, let me ask you, what did you hope to achieve? And did you achieve what you set out to do? Um, for me, I think that there were two main things that I hope to achieve. The first thing was that I hope that we were able to get a way to bring all the students together and staff members too because I think that all of us have felt very deeply affected after what happened in Parkland and we've, it w I think it's really good to have a unifying experience and to come around a common issue that affects all of us. Second thing was that we need to have our voices heard. We need the Congress to hear us. We need Paul Ryan to hear us. They need to listen to us and realize that we're kids, but we're we're uh, going to be of voting age. Some of us are, and we're going to vote them out if they don't protect our lives over NRA money. Yeah. What what percentage of the students in your schools walked out? It was a large number, small number a lot, of representatives. A lot of people at my school, Lake Braddock Secondary. Um, it was probably well over half. It was a large amount, and we were all in the black top, mm -hmm. and it was really powerful to see just the crowd, and people had signs, people were making speeches. It was really just powerful. And, and what was the administration saying to you? Were they encouraging you, or were they saying these are going to be unexcused absences, you got to make this up? I mean, what, what were they saying to you? We had to have permission to go. We had to have our parents write in, call, email, anything. They would not allow us to go without that. And they pushed back a little bit, but in the end, they were supportive of us and really encouraged us to fight for our rights. Yeah, it, it varied quite a bit from school to school. So like, Will and I both go to pretty small, um, uh, pretty small schools. My, my school um, was actually very supportive. Um, I was able to organize it sort of as a school trip, but I know that um, for different schools across the county and across the area, it was a lot different. So some people were just unexcused, but some, um, some schools especially, I know uh, a couple of people in PG County, which is actually more affected by gun violence than Montgomery County, um, where uh, most of the organizers are from, um, were absolutely disallowed and like faced like serious penalties if they went. You think lawmakers, and I'm talking both sides, okay? Uh, because I didn't see Republicans meeting with you guys. You know, I saw a few, few cases where Democrats met. But do you think they're taking you seriously or they just look at you as young people and eventually you get tired and you go back to your own selfish little world? Um, what do you think? I think that they are starting to take us more seriously than they have in the past. But I do think that there is a astounding amount of politicians and of adults in general who still don't take us seriously, who think that our focus on this issue is going to run out, we're going to get tired of it, we're apathetic, and we don't care enough. And um, what I have to say to those politicians is that they're strongly mistaken and they're going to see how every single um, movement in history has been led and spearheaded by students and this is no different. Okay, uh, put those tweets up that we want to go to because not everybody of course agrees with uh, what you guys did today. Uh, we posed this question on Facebook, if you don't think students should walk out of school, what should they do? And here's what some people said. Lynn said, learn about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Mary wrote, stay in school and learn for those who can't. Uh, that is the best gift that you can give. Anne said uh, they could be much more awesome if they use their education to write thoughtful, executed letters to their representatives. How do you respond to that? Um, I would take those uh, comments with, why not both, <laughs> um, right? Like. Uh, part of the reason that we were out on the Capitol today, as well as out on the Capitol a few weeks ago, um, students from the DMV also walked out and why we're going to be out, you know, in 10 days from now, and we're going to keep, you know, keep this going, keep this in the national narrative, um, uh, is that, like, the consistency really matters. And so I know, like, I personally, um, even before um, the shooting in Parkland, had uh, organized a trip through the Friends Committee on National Legislation with my school to bring kids um, to lobby in the offices of Congress people um, and to, to learn that way. Um, 
like and have a direct direct access access to political activism. Um, but I think you know, like I think that that this is a part of our education, um, and that this is um, like fueled and built upon like a knowledge of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Let me, let me ask you this, because I see two tracks here. One is, what, we, what are we going to do, if anything, about gun control, okay? And we've been having this debate for quite some time, and, and we'll see if, if the President and the Congress, you know, move off the dime. The other debate has to do with the immediate safety of you young people in school. My question is this, do you feel safe when you, when you go to school? Do you feel the, these shootings are happening somewhere else? You don't feel safe? No. Okay, what, what would you, suggest we do immediately to make you feel safer. You've heard people talk about arming teachers, okay? What about arming anybody who's well trained? I mean, what do you think? Um, I think arming teachers would make us, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but me personally, it would make me feel less safe. Agreed. Yeah. I definitely don't think that every teacher would feel comfortable being armed. I also think that whether or not it's the teacher's fault, there's going to be a lot of, um, of reactionary things. Uh, there's so many... Teacher's got enough to do. Exactly. Okay, my, my, what, what about a trained off-duty police officer? What about a trained resource officer with a weapon? You know, would you feel more safe, you know, if somebody armed and able to engage a possible government, would you feel more safe? These are adult questions, but you're adults. Let's talk about it. What do you think? I don't think that adding more guns is going to help anything. I think that we really need to remove the issue instead of just trying to like stop it as it's happening. I think that we need to prevent it from happening okay. instead. But I think that, like she said, almost having the weapons in the school with us would just make it worse. It would be accessible to students who might have ideas. It would just, I would feel more unsafe and like she said, I think just tackling the immediate issue yeah. is the best way to prevent it. Yeah, the NRA isn't here, and they're not likely to come on this program to discuss <laughs> this. But, but again, my question is, um, how do you protect students right now? Um, I think for me, I would feel more comfortable if schools went through more shooting drills in school. I, my school doesn't do that, and we have had like varied amount of threats at our school, and sometimes it seems like the school does not even know how to react. Um, and I know that's what saved a lot of people in Parkland, but I think overall, um, I would not feel safe or comfortable learning if our school had to turn into a prison for us to even be protected. Okay, you know, the NRA will come back and say, well, we protect our high-level officials. We've, we've got all kind of a security at the U.S. Capitol, at the White House, at airports. Why not the schools? How do you respond to that? You'd get used to it is what they'd say. I don't think um, mass shootings have obviously not obviously mass shootings have not been a school issue, right? Like you see it in, in Las yeah, Vegas, you see it soft targets. in North yeah. Carolina, you know, like the, I don't think the issue is security in schools. I think the issue is access to assault rifles uh, okay. And, okay. and to weapons of mass destruction. You want, you want a ban on the assault weapons? I do. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Because they're wrapping me up, but I want to give you guys the last word. Have we got everything? Um, I just want to shout out MoCo Students for Gun Control and everyone in the organization for planning an amazing rally today. And I want to say to members of Congress and the President of the United States, you should be scared because we're not stopping and we're not backing down and we're going to vote. Okay. I think they hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Thousands of people are expected to rally here in the nation's capital in just over a week for the March for Our Lives, which was organized by survivors of the Parkland shooting. Back in a minute.